So I want to share quickly on what I've titled, Always Joyful. Always Joyful. First Thessalonians chapter 5. We read from verse 16. First Thessalonians chapter 5 from verse 16. The Bible says, always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. How many people belong to Christ Jesus here? So what is the will of God for you? He said, be joyful. Always be joyful. Okay? Then he said, giving thanks to God in all circumstances. Um, verse 19 says, do not stifle the Holy Spirit. In other words, do not suffocate the Holy Spirit. Because you can suffocate the Holy Spirit. He said, do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies. Scoff means mock prophecies. But he said, test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. You can't carry the attitude and the mindset of joy and be depressed. It's impossible. It is impossible. You can't carry the atmosphere, the attitude, and the mindset of joy and thanksgiving, and then you become depressed. In fact, in my study, he looks like there are some personality types that are very vulnerable to depression. And oftentimes, like I always say, it's because you have not allowed the Holy Spirit to do the reprogramming of your temperament, of your personality. So the Bible says, always be joyful. That is a command. That is an instruction. Always be joyful. It's compelling us to do something. Okay? To do something about being joyful. It's not saying be moved by the Spirit to be joyful. Mm -mm. Because most of the time we think that some of these responsibilities are the Holy Spirit's job. No. He said, <laughs> be joyful. And he didn't say that by the Spirit. He said, be joyful. So it's not the Holy Spirit that is moving you to be joyful. It's a decision you need to make. Is somebody listening to me? It's a decision you need to make. I remember that song. La 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 Be happy. Happy? Don't worry, be happy. The Holy Spirit is not, the Bible is not saying we should be happy. I'm not saying you should not sing that song. You can sing it. But it's not saying be happy. Happiness and joy are not the same thing. The Bible says be joyful. Be joyful, suggesting that you should decide to be joyful. You should make up your mind to be joyful. Just as you decide to eat, as you decide to sit, as you decide to stand, as you decide to do anything, it's the same way you should make a decision to be joyful. That's what I say. So things may not go the way you expect. You say make up your mind, look through it, and take a decision. Make a decision to do what? To be joyful. Somebody saying it's impossible, it's difficult. I know. But one of the things that I know is that you can tame this body. You can do what? You can tame this body. You can regulate this body. You can, it's under your control. Your body is not outside of you. You can tame this body. And that's what the whole essence of being a Christian is. That you can make certain decisions under the influence of the Holy Spirit or make a decision to quick start or jump start something that the Holy Spirit will now take over in your life. When we say pray in tongues, for Christians who can pray in tongues, they jump start. And then at some point, the Holy Spirit take over. It's the same thing. Be joyful. It's a decision that you need to make. You know, this is so very, very important because a child of God can have the Holy Spirit super anointed, born again, sanctified, and still not joyful, and be sad. 
Is somebody listening to it? Can, can you imagine that? It's a possibility. And that's why there is a negative connotation to being an SU. When you see SU, it looks like some of them, not all of them, some of them, they, they tend to have a disposition that is not very pleasing. Am I correct? Some of us who were, who were, who were trying to, who tried to connect with the SU when we were in school. I don't want to associate with them. They're always too sober. Some of them are cold. Some of them are unfriendly. And they say, unequal, you can't be. Some of them are unhappy. But that's the limit to which they know. It's much more than that. You cannot be born again, be filled with the Holy Spirit, the spirit of excitement, <laughs> and not be joyful. Is somebody listening to me? Very, very important. So that scripture says, be joyful. Never stop praying. Maybe I should add, never stop praying in tongues. Then be thankful in all circumstances. Not only in good circumstances, in all circumstances. Be thankful. Be thankful in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you who belong to Jesus Christ. He said, do not stifle or suffocate the Holy Spirit because you can suffocate the Holy Spirit. You can frustrate the Holy Spirit in your life. You can. If you cannot, it will not say do not. Uh -huh. He said, do not suffocate the Holy Spirit and do not scoff prophecy. Do not mock prophecy. Then he said, test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. Hold on to what is good. In Acts chapter 8, verse 8. Philip went to the city of Samaria and he preached the gospel message. And after he preached the gospel message, many people became born again. The Bible says even priests, Levites who were under the law, who were, Judai, who were under the influence of Judaism, religious people, they became born again, they became converted. And the Bible says something about what happened. It said there was great joy in that city. Come on, great joy in the city. Why? Because someone came and brought this gospel message. So they fill the city with joy. When you read your Bible, read with insight and please pay attention to all the letters there. The past, the tenses are very, very important. Great joy in the city because people became born again. In Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 17, I want us to read that scripture. Luke chapter 7 from verse 11. Now, it happened the day after that he went into a city called Naim. And many of his disciples went with him. And what? A large crowd. That tells you the characteristics of Jesus' crowd. Some of us in the office, nobody wants to associate with you because you're born again. Not because you stand for righteousness. It's because there is a spirit around you they cannot explain. And you know the funny thing? Even born again, people are careful with you. You know, we have created that denominationalism even in the body of Christ. Somebody can be more born again than somebody. More born again. As if your Holy Spirit, the one you receive is made in Nigeria. The one that he received is made in heaven. And when he came near the gate of the city, so Bible deliberately told us the kind of crowd. He said there was a large crowd that was following Jesus. What does Jesus' crowd look like? <laughs> they were excited. Why? He's always doing miracle. And something was going to happen just now. The Bible says, and from verse, um, is it 12? And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out. The only son of his mother. And she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was also with her. Two different crowds. So if Jesus' crowd met this crowd, what was going to happen? Somebody's coming with their contaminated sadness. You they are the child of God. By the time they have unloaded on you, you became sadder and sadist. When you are supposed to infect them with your own joy. Is somebody listening to me? So the Bible says, when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin. And those who carried him stood still. And the Bible said, Jesus said, 
young man. He didn't mention his name. He didn't know his name. But out of compassion for the woman, because the Bible says she was the only son, and the woman was a widow. He said, young man, I say to you, arise. That was the resurrection and life himself. He said, young man, <laughs> I am resurrection and life. You may not believe in me because you are not even here. He didn't even come out. He said, arise. See, anything dead in your life today, they come alive. Yeah. Every opportunity that you felt that you have lost today, God is bringing them back. Yeah. Any situation that you consider dead today, they are resurrected. Yeah. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, young man, arise. And the Bible says, he who was dead, he did what? He sat up and then began to speak. And then Jesus did what? Presented him to his mother. Wow. Jesus presented him to his mother. What happened in verse 16? The Bible says, then the fear came upon all. And they did what? They glorified God, saying, a great prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people. God has visited his people. And the Bible says that this report um, about him went throughout all Judea and all the surrounding region. So when someone who is having an issue is going through an issue, even though you are going through your own, but because faith does not deny the facts, Faith overrides the fact with the assurance and guarantee of God. It means that you subdue the facts. Hallelujah. You subdue the facts and you choose, you choose to celebrate God. Because in the first place, you can't do anything about the matter. He is the only one who can do something about the matter. What am I telling you? Being deliberate. Somebody listening to me. Being deliberate. I've had many issues in my life. Oh, don't think that, Pastor. You don't have an idea. <laughs> you know now. You say you are winning money. How much are you in? 200,000, 300,000. They are calling you anyhow. I will win a lot of money. Millions. And that's just one of them. I've had issues where we're losing babies. All kinds, we have all, all kinds of issues. So your own is not the only one. And God has still been faithful all through the years. Is somebody listening to me? So when, when you overestimate your problem, you will underestimate God. Bible says that it's the will of God for those of us who are in Christ to be joyful and be thankful for everything and in all circumstances. So, you must decide to do the will of God for your life. It's, it's the will of God. You must take decision to do the will of God. So, it says to be joyful, not to be happy. Joy is what the Holy Spirit emphasizes. And joy is the product of the human spirit. And it's not based on events happening around you. It's not based on events. It is veiling the effects and screening it with the possibilities of God. That's joy. It is kickstarted by you and the Holy Spirit takes over. Just in case you don't know, you, you, you kickstart it, you jumpstart it, and the Holy Spirit takes over from there. So, joy, it comes from a choice to trust God in spite of whatever is happening around you, to depend on his promises because you consider him faithful. Joy is a deep commitment and assurance, a deep contentment and assurance that transcends your life's ups and downs. That is what joy is. So it is not a feeling. It's not a feeling. It's a state of mind. It's an attitude. It's a disposition. Okay? It's an attitude. It's a disposition. There are some people, there's nothing you say that will make them angry. 
And there's a character in the movie, Me and My Wife, a series that we like to watch. You don't want to mention names. <laughs> Ura. Olumide. Kuti. There's no, there's no abuse, you abuse him. <laughs> you know they think. <laughs> you know they think. I picked him out because I like his disposition. <laughs> what is, is, what, uh, I'm using it so that you can get it practically. What is it I'm saying? Is it looks, some people, it looks like it's far. It's not far. There's nothing you say. Some people fight them till tomorrow. They'll come back again. Some people want small issue. And they're filled with the Holy Spirit. Everywhere is up and down. And the Holy Spirit is begging them. You are suffocating me. You are suffocating me. They are not listening to the Holy Spirit. Joy is not based on what's happening in your life. It's a choice you make. It's a conviction that you have. It's a mindset. It's a disposition that your mind to, that you have. Happiness is fleeting. It's temporary. It's based on events, things happening around you now. I give you a gift. Or you heard the news. You can be happy. That's happiness. Joy sometimes doesn't even have a reason. And people will be looking at you. What's wrong with you? They can't understand it. And that's why it's the lasting emotion that flows from deep within us. And it's very contagious. Very contagious. It can quickly spread among people. Especially people who are discouraged. So Bible says, be joyful. Um, in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, Bible says that they spread, he said, the joy of the Lord. Can we put that in the scripture? He said, and he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those whom nothing is prepared, those who don't have. He said, for this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. That shall be your testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me say something. I don't want to talk too much about it. We make decisions on three levels. You make decisions based on your flesh. You make decisions at your soul level. But you also make decisions at your spirit level. The flesh is reflex. It's a reaction. It's reflex. You don't have to think about it. The soul is a response you may think about it. The spirit is inspired. It's not the product of your mind. It comes from the inspiration that you download. I, I don't want to go into that conversation, but that's how we make decisions in life. Three levels of decisions. The flesh level, the soul level, and the spirit level. So, if I choose to have an affair now, it's based on my flesh. Abi? But it's also not based on flesh alone. Sometimes you think about it. Ah, this is your okay, baby. What will happen? What will happen? When I'm a pastor. Yeah, but I I'm telling you how people think. If you heard that I did something, I'm telling you how I made that decision. Sometimes some things just don't happen. I would have thought about it, reflected on it. It's the same level. That's how we make decisions. At the flesh level, because you want to gratify the flesh. At the soul level, because of experience, because of your belief, because of your values, because of, you know, some things that you're going through. And at your spirit level, the ultimate place to make decision is at the spirit level. Is somebody listening to me? So I can agree now, when I go home and think about it, and I say no. Why? That is at the soul. I have thought about it. Reflex, say, say yes. Some people don't know how to say no to anything in life. Everything, yes, yes, yes. It's because it's reactional. It's reflex. There's another level when you go home and reflect and think about it. Then you say, oh, weigh this option or even consult. And you say, no, I, I won't make this decision. Then you can go back and say no. See, when you say yes, you can still say no. The only boy that made pencil is the one that did eraser. Some of us are breaking the principles of law. You took a job from a customer. 
I'm going to do it at 10 Naira. Because price in Nigeria now is a wicked spirit. Just flowing anyhow. The price has changed. Instead of you to go back to your customer and say, I'm sorry, we need to renegotiate this price. You forced yourself to do it. Now you're not able to finish it. You now become sister devil. Because the person is now not happy with you. Meanwhile, you, you refuse to understand that you can always go back and renegotiate. Is somebody listening to me? If the price has changed, go back, plead with your customer and beg them. Sometimes it's the best thing to do than for you to set yourself up, do something, and then halfway you get stuck. You are not able to finish the job. There are people, I know they are not in work They cannot be here. The customer has just been with you for four months. They are not picking the call. I'm sure they are not here. Am I correct? They're not here. Praise the Lord. Our time is fast spent. So what does it mean to give thanks? To give thanks means to show gratitude and appreciation. That's what it means to say thank you. It's to show appreciation and gratitude. But in my study of Jesus, the way Jesus gave thanks, it's much more than that. You know, there's so many treasures hidden in the Bible. I've told you before that the Bible contains information. The Bible contains fact. But the Bible also contains truth. Truth is the ultimate. And all truth must lead to Christ. But some people just do the information. Tells you about David. Tells you how he reigned. Tells you about the women in his life. Tells you about his children. But there's also facts in the Bible. These things are facts. Till today, if you go to Israel, you will see those facts. But that's the ultimate one, which is what? The truth. It just depends on which one you are looking for in the Bible. And when you come across truth, that is the revelation. That's the revelation. And God can choose, okay, to open scriptures to you and you see it in a different light. And it's not that you just take information, or sorry, inspiration like that. You are supposed to practice it. See, that is the ultimate destination that you put the word of God to use, to test in your life. Is somebody listening to me? That's the ultimate. So how did Jesus give thanks? Let me show you some things. Matthew 26, 26, amplified. I'm going to use amplified all through. Matthew 26, 26. The Bible says, now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and praising God, gave thanks and asked him to bless it to their use. And when he had broken it, he gave it to the disciples and said, take it. This is my body. Now, let's look at that same scripture in New King James Version. Let's look at that same scripture in New King James Version, NKJV. The Bible says, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and did what? Blessed and broke. He blessed and broke. So, what does it mean to bless? It means that because what Amplified class is doing is not saying something new. It's only amplifying, okay? So it's just like this thing is amplifying my voice, okay? That's what Amplified Version does. It amplifies what is being said. So New King James Version says, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it and gave it to disciples. Now, let's go back to Amplified Version. What did Amplified Version say? said, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and praising God, did what? Give thanks. And asked him to do what? To bless, to bless it, their use. Hmm. Mark chapter 6, verse 41. Amplified classic. Mark 6, 41. And taking the five loaves and two fishes, he was going to feed 10,000 plus people. Because the Bible says only men were documented as 5,000, okay? So there were women and children who you know are most likely to be more than men. So the Bible says that in taking the five loaves and two fishes, he looked up to the heaven and praising God, gave thanks and broke the loaves. Again, he looked up to heaven, he praised God, gave thanks before he broke. Lacks reference. Mark chapter 8 verse 6. Mark 8, 6, Amplified Classic. And he commanded the multitude to recline upon the ground, and he took the seven loaves of bread, and having given thanks, 
Now, this is seven loaves. It's different from the first one, five loaves and two fishes. This is a different one. It says seven loaves um, of bread. And having given thanks, he broke them and kept on giving them to his disciples. So when the Bible says that Jesus took bread and blessed it, there was something he was doing. That bless means that he was giving thanks. And he was doing what? Praising God. Whatever he said, okay, literally means that he was praising God. He was giving praise to God. He was raising thanksgiving unto God. Five loaves and two fishes are not enough to feed thousands of people. You would think that Jesus will complain. Jesus will grumble. Just like we complain when things are not enough or we don't even have it. The Bible says, what did Jesus do? He did what? He gave thanks. He blessed God. Somebody say, how can you bless God? You can bless God. And that's the meaning. Blessing God is giving him thanks and praise. Bless you, Lord. <laughs> you think that it's God that should bless you. You can minister to God. That's what it means. It's ministering to God. When you hear blessing God, he blessed God and he ministered to him. So you have to learn to bless God with your heart and from your heart, with your mouth, from your heart and your spirit. Apostle, Paul, Apostle James said something in James chapter 3. Uh, let's focus on chap, um, verse, verse 10. Because if you read that chapter 3, he was talking about the taming of the tongue. What we use our tongue to say. But in verse 10, he says, Out of the same mouth proceed blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter water from the same opening or from the same source? He said, Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives? No, fig tree will always give birth, I mean, will always bear fig fruits, Abby. Or grapevine, does it bring forth figs? First, no spring yields both salt, water, and fresh. So it's telling us that your mouth too should be used to bless God. Don't use it to curse. Don't use it to gumble. Don't use it to murmur and complain. After all, the Bible says that we are God's temple. We are God's temple. So there's a reason why we bless God and honor him and give him praise for all the things that he has done in our lives. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, let me round up, verse 16 to 7. He said, do you not know that you are the temple of God? 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 7. You are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you. If anyone defies that temple of God, God will do what? God will destroy. So sometimes the reason why people go through something is it looks like we are, we are the one destroying the temple of God and God is dealing with us. He said whoever defies the temple of God, God will do what? God will destroy. God will destroy. So what Apostle Paul says here, Apostle Peter confirmed in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. What did he say? He said, you also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that we are living stone. I have shared with you before. When people offer sacrifices, they often kill the animal before they set it on fire, before it gets born to God. When the Bible says we are living sacrifices, Romans 12, uh, verse 1, it said that, Brigidio, brethren, that you offer yourself as living sacrifice unto God. Okay? He said, I beseech you, therefore, my brethren, my demise of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, only acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And I describe that that living sacrifice means that even though you are alive, you are set on the fire as a sacrifice to God, so as you move, flame of fire, blessing and honoring God, you are a living sacrifice. Praise the Lord. You are a living sacrifice. Let me round it up. So what it means is that dead bulls, pigeons, goats, and animals that they used to offer sacrifices are no more acceptable. The sacrifice we offer to God now are the living ones. We are first of all the sacrifice of ourselves, and then he said we are living stones. We are the altar that you offer sacrifice to God. This, Jesus, the scripture now says something about the fruit of our leaves. Let me show you that. Oh, hallelujah.
He said, offer yourself as living sacrifices to God. Let me round it up because of time. I don't want to go too much into the details. So what are we saying? We're saying that every time you bless, you honor God, you want to magnify the name of the Lord, decide it from your spirit. Choose to reflect. It may not be moved by the spirit, mm -mm, but make a decision to say, Father, I bless you. Lord, I honor you. For those who are close to me, when I get up or I'm going to do something, Lord Jesus, I bless your name. I give you thanks. It's always breaking forth out of my mouth. As far as I'm concerned, that is my responsibility. It's my worship unto God. So when the Bible says that you are living sacrifices or that you bless God and give him thanks, that's what the Bible is saying, that you deliberately, you jumpstart the conversation of thanksgiving and gratitude to God. Don't let the issues and situation around you overwhelm you so much that you struggle to bless God. And he said, in all circumstances, in all circumstances. On Thursday, I was sharing with you that sometimes some things are in our lives that do 1,000 years of praying and fasting. God will not take it away. It's in the Bible. There are things that God will not destroy. Moses begged God, let me get to promised land. God said, stop. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it anymore. And he didn't get to promised land. And it didn't mean that God was angry with him. Apostle Paul says, I had a thorn in my flesh. He said, three times I prayed to God and begged God and begged God. And then God said, keep quiet. My grace is made sufficient in your weakness. So sometimes when you see a Christian who has been trusting God for fruit of womb for many years, and it's, not, it's not that God is not answering them. God has taken a decision. He may do it later. He may not do it later. He doesn't mean that God hates them or God is not God. Is somebody listening to me? Understand the will of God for that matter. There was no prayer Jesus was going to pray. He was going to die. They say you are going to die. You say you don't want to die. Why well, are you not born to die? He, he, <laughs> he was going to die. He went into the vineyard and, and at some point he came to that conclusion. He said, Lord, your will, not my will, not your will. And that should be the ultimate destination and decision of every child of God. I pray that the will of God will be, come to pass in your life in the name of Jesus. When I pray that kind of prayer, please remember, what is the will of God? He may be good by our own estimation. He may not be good by our own estimation. But if it's the will of God, I pray that the will of God be done in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. You know, when you explain will like that, the amen will not be like before. <laughs> they saw a, boy, a man that was blind from birth. And they asked Jesus, who sinned? Because the human expectation is that somebody sinned. That was why I went through that experience. And Jesus said, nobody sinned. Yeah, yeah, people. That's not how to think. He said, so that the, he said, God will be glorified in his life. In other words, my estimation is that Jesus will have the opportunity of opening his eyes and God will be glorified. Very important. Very important. So, when we give thanks... We are confessing to God's greatness, to his goodness, to his faithfulness, to his kindness, to his love, and his blessings in our lives. And it has to be something that is continuous. Don't do it only on Sundays. Don't do it only during Thanksgiving. Make it a lifestyle. Because that is what they used to do in the Old Testament. Pastors, I mean priests, will always worship God. There is always a flame in the tabernacle that doesn't go out. <laughs> there is always a flame. There are people permanently stationed, okay, just... To be a blessing to God. Remember the tabernacle that Jesus, I mean that David set up. I mentioned it to you. The tabernacle that his own tabernacle was Thanksgiving Thanksgiving tabernacle. There was another one where they were doing remission of sin and doing all this. But there's a particular one that G David set up. And the only thing priests are doing there is just to bless God. Deliberately created to have people perpetually 24-7 magnifying the name of God. What kind of a man is that? He understood God. He understood God. So from the depth of your spirit, thanksgiving will always be going to God. I thought you would say amen. amen. Even when you are not conscious, even when you are sleeping, thanksgiving will always be going out to God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Finally, I call it practice of righteousness. I've told you before. Practice it. Do it. Try it this week. Before you say, Oh, Lord, are you? Before you say, eh, caution yourself. Practice it. After a while, it becomes part of you. 
Okay, we call it practice of righteousness. Romans chapter 3, chapter 11, verse 36, as a roundup. Romans chapter 11, verse 36, amplified version. It said, for, I want us to read it together. One to go. For from him and through him and to him are all things. For all things originate with him and come from him. All things live through him and all things center in and tend to consummate and to end in him. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. amen. I thought your amen would be louder. Amen. 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 That's a correct estimation of who God is. For me to live is Christ. If I die, it's gain. Praise the Lord. So this week, Thanksgiving will proceed from your spirit. And as you give him praise and bless his name, situations and circumstances will give way. In the marvelous name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we bow our heads as we pray? Hallelujah. I want you to ask, Lord, I receive grace. I receive grace and capacity to offer myself as a living sacrifice. Henceforth, thanksgiving will proceed from my spirit. Thanksgiving will proceed from my heart. If you joined us online, uh, you can get your communion material now. It's time for us to partake of the communion. Father, today we are living sacrifices. Oh, we are living sacrifices unto God. We are living stones set up to give him thanks, to honor his name, to bless his name, to magnify the name of the Lord and exalt his name forever. Thank you, Father. We bless your name today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Before we partake of the communion, is there anyone who wants to make a decision for Jesus? You have not started a relationship with Jesus. You are not born again. Whether you are here or you are connecting with us online, uh, you have an opportunity to make that decision um, for Christ today. If you are not born again and you would like to make that decision, then please put one hand in your chest and leave the other hand. In fact, you shouldn't partake of the communion if you are not born again. It's dangerous. You shouldn't if you're not born again. So if you want to make a decision for Jesus, all eyes closed and all eyes bad. Let's pray. Let's trust God for our brothers and our sisters to make this decision. Right? So if you want to make that decision, can you put one hand on your chest and leave the other hand? And please say this prayer with me, whether you are here or join us online. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you today. I ask that you come and be my Lord and my Savior. I believe that Jesus is your son and that Jesus died for me and on the third day, you raise him from the dead. I accept him as my Lord and Savior. And I ask that you will come and fill me with your spirit and with your presence. I renounce Satan and his works. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, for your sons and daughters who are making this decision, we receive them in the beloved today. And we declare that your power rests upon them in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, they're translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And I declare the power of heaven rest upon their lives in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. If you made a decision, I also gave you a card. Please fill the card and leave it on your seat or you give it to any of our officials. After now, we'd like to help you um, be established in faith. Okay. If you made a decision online, there's a link you can click right now that will help us capture your data so that we can send you materials that will help you in this new beautiful decision that you made in the name of Jesus. All, all right, can we all stretch for our hands towards the communion? Ask the Lord as I partake of your body today. Your life is infused into me. Your power takes over from now on. I am filled with the life of God. I am filled with the fullness of God. Jesus says, if you do not eat my flesh and drink my blood, you do not have my life inside of you. He said, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has my life inside of him. He said, for my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed. So this moment, we receive the life of God and the power of God in these materials and we declare his transformative power enters into each and every one of us. Your weak body receives life now. You cannot be sick anymore. You are energized. Every cell in your body is infused with life. The Bible says, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in your mortal body, he who raised Christ will quicken your mortal body. We declare today, quickening of our mortal bodies, of our spirit, our souls, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for this meal. Your body was broken for us so that our own bodies will not be broken. 
Your blood was spilled so that our own blood will not be spilled by the blood that you shed on the cross of Calvary. You obtained eternal life for everyone who will believe in you. So, because we believe in you, we have your life, Zoe life, God's kind of life. And we cannot have this life and be weak and be sick and be diseased and be oppressed by the enemy. This moment would declare, as we partake of this body, the life of God is infused into our bodies, into our spirit, into our souls, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare wholeness for everyone who partakes of this communion, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. And Lord, today I stand on the word of God, and I declare every arrangement, every appointment, every plan of the enemy to take anyone by accident in this church, wherever you may be, wherever you may connect with, from us, with us from, I declare today that covenant, that arrangement is shattered in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All journey by here, by road, by rail, by whatever, by, by road, by, by water, I declare safety in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare the hand of God rest upon you. His divine covering rest upon you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare over our children, no one will be sick. No one will be diseased. No one will be snatched by death in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus we declare the life of God in this meal right now. And we declare we enjoy God's quality life in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Today we sanctify this meal in the name of God the Father, in the name of Jesus the Son, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, faithful God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Right, so the hymn is on the screen. Alone, it's also in your WhatsApp my channel. Hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone is solid ground. Went to the fairest ground and stone. What I
shall be your testimony in Jesus' name. No power of the enemy will be able to overtake you. You will walk in victory. You walk in sound health. You walk in sound mind. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Two days ago, the Holy Spirit gave me this prophecy and asked me to prophesy it over your life. Joshua chapter 21 from verse 3, verse 43. He said, so the Lord gave to Israel all the land which he has sworn to give to their fathers. And they took possession of it and dwell in it. Joshua 21 from verse 43. So the Lord gave to Israel all the land which he has sworn to give to their fathers. Every promise that God has given you. Whether this year or years in the past. Every prophecy. Every word of covenant. Every word of promise that God has given you. I declare today. They happen in your life in the name of Jesus. God will bring them to pass in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Bible says, and they took possession of it and dwell in it. You take possession in the name of Jesus Christ. You take possession of all his blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. And not only that, you will enjoy them. I say you will enjoy them in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 44, the Bible says, the Lord gave them rest all around. I say, enter your season of rest. Amen. Round about you, rest in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Every storm, the Lord comes them in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, the Lord gave them rest all around according to all that he has sworn to their fathers. And not a man of all their enemies stood against them. Ah, I declare, no enemy will be able to stand before you. All the days of your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no divination against your life. There is no enchantment against you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every contention against your life today, they are buried in the blood of Jesus Christ. You walk in victory. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, not a word failed. Verse 45, not a word failed. <laughs> of any good thing which the Lord has spoken to the house of white olive. That shall be your testimony in the name of the Lord Jesus. Not a word will fail. Not a word will fail. Not a word will fail, Not a word will fail in your life. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every word spoken from this pulpit, declared by God's word into your life, I declare none will fall to the ground. God is committed. 
God will bring them to pass in your life. You will come back here to share testimonies. I said you will come back here to share testimonies. I said you will come back here to share testimonies. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything will come to pass. Everything the Lord has said will come to pass in your life. You will be the manifestation of his grace. The manifestation of his gifts. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I speak under God today. 2024 will be your best year so far. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We give Jesus all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. 